Welcome back to Cypress Sea of Galilee, DSN and me on this ferial day, October 8th. So a ferial day is a fun day on Cypress Sea because you never know what we're gonna give to you. And we just pray the Holy Spirit to let us know what maybe you're needing in your life. So on this particular ferial day, the responsorial psalm at Mass this morning really caught my attention, and it is from John, and it is chapter 12, so you can read it. And Christ is saying, now the prince of this world will be driven out. And when I am raised on high, I will draw all things to myself. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. We are standing today in front of a beautiful picture of Dominicans. Paying attention to whom? You might say, oh, Jesus, of course. Actually, he kind of looks like him because he's his cousin, but it's not Jesus, it's John the Baptist. And yes, he has a staff, and yes, he looks a little bit more raggly, and you can see, perhaps, that he is not wearing what Jesus is usually depicted as wearing, but he's wearing camel hair, perhaps. In any case, it's John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist kind of came as a dividing line in the salvation of mankind, meaning what? He carries the Old Testament with himself, but he branches and divides into the New Testament, meaning he is telling the people before the public life of Christ that Christ is coming. And so he's trying to bring in the old, but prepare them, you're gonna be surprised because you really don't know God the way that you think you do, you Pharisees and Sadducees. Maybe your hearts are good, but you have bound him up with so many rules and so many details that your hearts are now fenced in and cornered in. And it's like a puzzle that doesn't have all of its pieces together anymore. And that just is not going to fit together anymore because the big picture is love. And you think the big picture is just do this because I have to, because of fear, fear, terrible motive. Prudent motive on occasion, but I'm not talking about that kind of fear. I'm talking about fear that encapsulates the heart and makes it want to just be covered with 5,000 layers of don't touch me, don't get near me, don't ask anything of me, don't expect anything of me. Fear that kills interiorly. John the Baptist broke everybody out of that. How? Because again, as you know, John the Baptist actually preached, repent. Well, that's not a real popular word. Why would we repent if we're so wonderful? That's the problem. You don't have self-knowledge. Why would we repent if I keep all these different things as a wonderful scribe, as a wonderful Pharisee? Maybe you, John, need to repent. That's the problem. You're under a false illusion of holiness. And you've allowed yourself to become victim to a false, quote, holiness, which shouldn't be called holiness, but I'm sure they probably thought that they were. So John the Baptist really says, now is the time where the prince of this world and all the sillinesses will be seen for what it is, the big zero it holds. Think about that. What things are tying you down to this world that you say I'd be a lot better off if I let go of? Maybe they're material possessions. Maybe there's some kind of addictions. Maybe they're anxieties. We all have bits and pieces of, of lots of temptations. And by letting go of them, we prove we get the big picture John the Baptist with you. Christ is present and I need to step out of my old self into a new renewed self by God's grace, but by my willingness. And so John the Baptist stands as a very strong saint. And how did Christ then take it a step further by saying, okay, you've done that great, but only when I am lifted up from the world, if you will, can I draw all things, including you, to myself. Only if you are willing to pay the price of love, and love has a price, everybody. False love doesn't, false love's a lie. Authentic, Christ-like love has a price, the price of me, the price to, of you, given to the beloved. The beloved being God, and then God and all the people. Wow, what a beautiful fairy day meditation. So thanks for inspiring that in me, because just by you paying attention to this, I know you're praying for me and for my sisters and for my wonderful assistant, Sister Mercedes, who is holding this screen right now as she gets this, as we are thinking 
about our beautiful life on the Sabbath Sea of Galilee with Mary and the heart of her son. God bless.